Inflation has been skyrocketing at a rate in which we haven't seen in the last 40 years, which is some really bad news. But there is some good news, and that is you can still find good quality survival gear under the 50... Oh, right, inflation. Under the $60 mark. Today we are going to be talking about some of the best survival gear that you can get that costs $60 or less. Before I get started showing y'all specific pieces of gear, I just want to do a couple of disclaimers. And the first one is prices change all the time. They change daily, sometimes hourly. So there might be something on this list that I suggest. And then you click on the affiliate link and it's like 65 or 70. I try my best to go through and make sure that when I made this video, everything was $60 or less. Now, most things, they're going to range somewhere between the $20 and $50 mark. So just kind of keep that in mind. Most of the prices are going to be there. Um, a couple of them might be a little bit higher, especially if you catch this video a few weeks or months after I post it. And then another disclaimer is that I have not included tax on any of these items. And the reason for that is sales tax can, it depends largely on where you live. Some places have it, some places don't. So I didn't even bother with it. These are just prices as I found them going through different online retailers. The first piece of survival gear on this list is going to be the Mora Companion. These are great little knives. Usually they cost around $20. And I don't think you're going to find anything better as far as just a general purpose camp knife goes in that price range. It comes with a good quality just plastic sheath that clips right over your belt, has a drain hole in it, which is always nice. The blade itself is made of a Sandvik stainless steel, gets razor sharp, uh, corrosion resistant and it's fairly easy to, sh easy, sorry, to sharpen back up. Now one thing about this knife that a lot of people won't like is that it is not full tang. The tang only goes to about here and then it's just handle the rest of the way. But on the other hand I've also heard stories of people using and abusing these knives for years and never having a problem out of that. The handle is pretty comfortable, um, a rubberized texture, it won't slip. But the good thing about these knives is, like I said, they're 20 bucks. You can buy one for every member of the family, stash them in bug out bags, forget about them until you need them. But also, if you have somebody in your family, maybe they're, they're just moving out on their own and you're trying to, to outfit like their, their new apartment, their house, whatever the case may be, and you can only buy one knife, this will do pretty much anything. It can be used for like camp or survival craft, and it can also be like a great kitchen knife also. So this thing, it serves a lot of different purposes, and at 20 bucks, it's a great value. Another excellent piece of survival gear under $60 is going to be a weather radio. This particular one is the Midland ER310. Right now, it's costing around like $59.95, so it's just right at kind of the top of the price range that we're talking about. But I did a review on it a while back, which I will put a link for in the description below. But this particular radio has a lot going for it. It'll pick up your AM, your FM, and your NOAA weather band frequencies. It has multiple ways to keep it powered, and I think versatility is a big deal for a device like this. You notice it has a solar panel up top, and it also has a hand crank, which you can use to power, and of course you can power it from a wall. And all of that energy will go into a lithium ion rechargeable battery. But if that lithium ion battery wears out, it will accept normal double A's as well. And some other little features that it has that's nice. Of course, it has your little, your little flashlight here. It has a few different modes. It has a dog whistle mode where if you, um, if you activate that, it emits a high pitch frequency that like search and rescue dogs can hear to tell them where you are to facilitate your rescue. And also you can set it to detect alerts in your area, similar to how your phone picks up tornado warnings and things like that. So if the radio detects it, then it'll notify you of that. The next piece of gear on this list is going to be an alcohol stove, also known as a spirit burner. What I like about these is, first of all, they're very small. They don't take up much room. They're very lightweight, especially when they're empty. But what's my favorite thing about them 
is that they can run on many different types of fuel sources. Probably the most common thing that's used in them is gonna be denatured alcohol. That's what I use, it burns really clean. But you can also run other types of alcohol for this. You can use isopropyl alcohol. You can use even yellow heat, which is a fuel additive along with Everclear. So it just gives you a lot of different options. This particular one is made by Solo Stove. Probably the most well-known version is made by Trangia. They've been making them for a long time. Their older ones are just excellent, but I've enjoyed using this one as well. And it has a cap on it so that you can store fuel in it when you're not using it without it leaking. And it also has a top on it that you can use to put it out. If you've used a, like a alcohol, uh, like Coke can stove, you kind of kind of be careful how you snuff this, snuff those out. But this comes with a snuffer and it's also a, uh, a simmer top how it slides in and out. You can use that to uh, control, control the flame and control the heat. Prices for these range around 20 to 25 bucks. And since they are that inexpensive, you can also afford to get like a folding stove to put over the top of this. And usually those are around 15 or 20 bucks also. So the whole setup still costs less than $50 as of making this video. But even if you don't have like the like normal like little folding stove for it, you can still use other things. Like you can, if you have pots that are the same height, you can set like a cooking rack on top of those, put the stove underneath it, put your pot on top, and then cook that way. So I really like these. Another great piece of prepper and survival gear under $60 is going to be a good hatchet. This one is made by S-Wing. It's their sportsman's ax. And usually these cost around $50, 40 or $50. And there's other axes in that price range as well. Like I know Fiskars, they have some hatchets and some axes that I think cost about that. Um, but all those are gonna be durable. They're all gonna be good options. This one is just one solid piece of steel from the head all the way through the handle. Handles made of these stacked leather discs, which seem to last forever and it swells out to the end. So as you're swinging it, it's not gonna fly out of your hand, but you know, axes and hatchets, they have a huge number of uses. If you're at home, of course, you can use them to help clean your yard. They can be used to, if you're out in the field, build shelters, process wood for fires or for other purposes. So considering its price point and all that it can do, I think that a reasonably kind of moderately priced hatchet or axe such as this would add a lot of value to your preps. The next piece of survival gear under $60 is gonna be different types of water filters. Here I have a couple of filters made by Sawyer. I have the Sawyer Tap, which runs around 40 bucks, and then the Sawyer Mini, which usually runs around 20 to $22 nowadays. But also other filters will be in the $60 price range, such as the Sawyer Squeeze. I think those usually run around 30 or 35. And then the, the Catadyne Be Free, I think it's right at 50 now. So depending on what your needs are, will of course determine which sort of filter you want. Things like the Be Free, the Squeeze, and the Mini, they're gonna be great to keep in a bug out bag to take with you. So if you gotta pass through like some sort of wilderness area, they'll remove you know, your bacteria, your protozoa, and then also you know, sediment. But if you want a water filter that you can use at home during things like boil water notices and things like that, then the Sawyer Tap filter is a great option. I've shown it before on my channel. It uh, just slips over the, the faucet on your sink, has a spigot adapter so you can use it outside. And one thing that I have done with my Sawyer Tap filter is I got a five gallon bucket. I put a spigot on that bucket so that I can use my Sawyer tap as sort of a gravity filter. I put it on the spigot, pour water in, and then the water flows through the tap filter into another container. What I like about that is I can use it as a first stage filter to remove a lot of the stuff that I don't want going through my Berkey, just because you wanna save the, your more expensive filtering elements for as long as possible and removing as many contaminants from it prior, from the water prior to it going through that is always a good thing. That and after an emergency is over, I don't want the inside of my Berkey and the filters smelling like swamp because I 
put puddle water into it. So these different types of small, portable, kind of inexpensive filters, they give you a lot of flexibility and they can serve a lot of different purposes. The next piece of prepper and survival gear under $60 is going to be a poncho. This particular one is made by USGI Industries. It's made of good quality, durable ripstop material. And in addition to providing protection from the rain, it can also do other things that folks like us with a prepper and survivalist mindset will find useful. Most notably, you can make um, like temporary shelters out of this. You can make things like A-frames and other types of shelters. And even if you don't have paracord with you, which is always good, you should have paracord, especially if you're in a situation where you might have to make a shelter, but the waist strap, or the, the waist kind of, the cinch strap, is long enough that it could help you with those types of things. And also, it can accommodate a poncho liner. So if you add that to it, it's also going to help you keep warm and dry both. The next piece of survival gear under $60 is going to be a good folding wood saw. And the one I have here with me is the Baco Laplander. It's one of the more popular ones on the market nowadays. I think they usually run around $30 or so. Other companies make good wood saws as well. I know Corona, not that Corona. Corona makes a good wood saw. I've actually seen them for sale at Tractor Supply. And there are some of the smaller silky saws, which are under $60 as well. I think the Pocket Boy is one of them. But having a good wood saw is just going to give you another way to, to do stuff out in the woods, to collect wood for fire, process it, make shelters, all that different kind of stuff. And another good thing about a folding saw is that if you take the coating off the blade, you're going to be able to use the spine of it to strike a ferro rod. So it's one of those tools that can make your life a lot easier, can help prevent injuries, and it also has multiple functions. The next piece of prepper and survival gear under $60 is going to be a good stainless steel water bottle. This is one I picked up from Self-Reliance Outfitters about a year, year and a half ago. And when I bought this, I got it as part of a kit. So it came with this, the nesting cup, the lid, a little stove, the bottle, and a couple other odds and ends like ferro rod and a, and a spoon fork combo. I think it was around $85 or so. But you can get this just by itself, and I think it costs around $27. And there's other companies that make stainless steel water bottles. I know Clean Canteen, they're pretty well known for those, as well as Nalgene, they have one also. And good thing about a stainless steel water bottle is that you can boil water directly in those containers. If you have something else like a plastic one, of course, it's just going to melt when it's exposed to too much heat. And then insulated water bottles, they're not going to be good for that either. So having a single walled stainless steel water bottle is going to give you a durable container that you can use for other things as well. Another excellent thing for preppers and survivalists to have that costs under $60 is going to be different types of water containers. Right here I have the Scepter Military Water Can. I think right now it's a little bit over 50 but these are pretty easy to find in the surplus market for significantly less. I went to a local flea market last weekend and I bought one just like this, just a little bit beat up for 20 bucks. And I thought that was a great deal, especially considering the inside of it didn't smell like rocket fuel or anything terrible like that. It just smelled pretty much the same thing as this. So if you're buying used, do a sniff check, make sure it's not damaged, don't have any holes in it but those are good options. Then other things like the Reliance Aquatainer, those are usually around 20 bucks now. And then even you can buy a pair of water bricks, the, the stackable water containers, for right around 50 or $60. Now, if you want a spigot for them, that is going to cost extra. But having portable water containers is a big deal. First of all, it gives you more water storage inside your house. That's going to be a little bit more robust than storing things like, you know, just like little plastic water bottles. I mean, it's good to have those, but these are a good kind of, I guess, like second level of water storage up from those. And then also the advantage that it has over like larger bulk containers, like, you know, 55 gallon barrels and stuff is that you can take this water with you. If you have to bug out, then you can just load your water storage into your car and then go. I'm not, I'm not saying at all don't have water stored in those larger bulk containers. I'm not saying that at all. If you can do that, definitely do it. But having things like this will allow you to take at least some of your stored water if you need to. 
Then of course, if you're somebody who likes to hunt, likes to camp, or even if you take road trips, these are great to have with you as well in case you need water for drinking, for washing, or you know, if, if you have some sort of car, car trouble or you get caught in a traffic jam for some reason or another, at least you'll have some water with you if you need it. And the last piece of prep or survival gear that I want to talk about today is going to be different types of freeze-dried meals. And when it comes to price, it depends on a lot of different things. Uh, the brand is a big consideration. Then even different like entrees or offerings from a specific brand could cost more or less than another one. So there's a lot of different factors. But while I was doing price research, I still was able to find a lot of stuff under $60, including the larger number 10 cans. And if you can't find the number 10 cans because people are scooping them up left and right, then you might look into the pouches. It might cost you more if you're buying in bulk just because, you know, buying a bunch of pouches is probably going to be a little bit more expensive than buying a bunch of number 10 cans. Unless, of course, prices for those are through the roof, which that could be. But both of them store for about the same time. I think the shelf life for both of them is 30 years. I like Mountain House. There are other brands. I just like the way that these taste. Like their lasagna, to me, I've said it before in other videos. I'll say it again because it is the truth. It tastes like a Stouffer's lasagna that you would get from the freezer section and then cook in your oven. It's really not bad. Their Chili Mac is really good. And it's very easy to just set these aside and forget about them until you need them. Um, I know that if you store things in your pantry, like if you're storing canned goods and you have them in a canned rotator, sometimes it's really easy to maybe not be as disciplined about that as you should be. You know, you, you eat a can, you buy a can. That's what you're supposed to do. But sometimes we eat three or four cans and we forget to buy and then we look at our, um, our can rotator and it's like, oh shoot, I don't have any spaghetti sauce or, or whatever. But with these, you stick them in your closet and you really don't even think about them being there until there's some sort of emergency where you need something that you can cook very easy with only water and a little bit of heat. And y'all, I did a video a while back which was Best Prepper and Survival Gifts Under $20. It was done around Christmas and was supposed to be for stocking stuffers. But considering the situation that we're in, if you're looking for even more low-cost survival gear, then that would probably be a good video to check out, and I'll put a card up here. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again.